Greetings, once again we meet and today we will be spending some time uh, talking about properties, schedule and trigger. For the sake of being able to use the same, we will you know, use uh, some of the tasks that we have already made. I will uh, prefer to use this task which is a screen recording which I have already made and uh, as you can see uh, even before I can you know proceed to go and start changing these properties it is saying check out the file to enable editing the properties. So why is it you know asking me to go and check out the file before I can start doing anything on it and why is you know this thing not showing anything and this thing has a plus sign in front of it. So let me first take a moment and explain that before I go in and start you know uh, talking about the properties and the schedule and trigger. So if I click on this, let's me say I am going to go and you know I want to upload maybe this particular task on my uh, web control room. So as you can see as of now it is showing this plus symbol next to it. So if I, which is basically an indicator that my web control room to which this client is connected is integrated to the version control software. So what I will be doing is I will do a right click on this and there is an option upload. So when you say upload it will first of all ask me for a comment entry. Comment entries as we know are useful because they help us understand you know that uh, what it is that we did particularly in this version of the software. So if, if you have multiple versions it helps you distinguish between these different versions. So I am going to say upload this comment over here. So to upload this particular com uh, upload this particular uh, script over here, I have to first and foremost give a uh, you know small comment which will help me understand that what it is I did in this particular uh, version of this script, and that would be you know uh, something like comment script upload something like that. And I can go and probably you know save it. So once I do that, you can see you know I was trying to upload that task onto my web uh, web control room, and in a moment's time it should be able to do the same. And once it is says upload is successful, you can see now this is also having a blank space where we had the plus symbol earlier. So bottom line is that you know when the moment you upload a task from your local machine onto the web CR, uh, the plus symbol you know gets replaced by a vacant spot indicating that this particular task is has been uploaded onto the uh, web control room and further uh, because it is already integrated into version control it would have gone inside the version control uh, repository also. Now the question is how do we you know uh, allow us to you know uh, make changes to these properties. If you look at any of those tasks which already has the plus symbol next to it, these properties are pretty much editable. But the ones which have been uploaded, they are not you know allowing me to edit their properties and uh, the reason being they are already you know uploaded onto the web control room. So how do we you know uh, or what do we have to do before we can you know get the properties you know get them back into editable mode. So to do that I am going to do a right click over here and there is an option check out. Now what is check out let us take a moment and understand that first. If we had uh, you know let us say I uploaded a script from my uh, machine my development client onto the web control room. Now we know you know that other team members who have the permissions they can download that script and they can start making changes to it. So what happens if two people are simultaneously updating the script? Let's say the let's say the software allows people to simultaneously update the script at the same point of time. What is going to be the you know uh, result uh, of that uh, simultaneously up, uh, simultaneous update? The result would be you know that one if you both save it simultaneously, one of us is going to lose the changes. Or let's say I save the changes a moment later somebody else said it by changes got over it and you know things would get lost. So to prevent that what we have to do is we have to check out the file. So once you check out the file that file is granted exclusive access to that person only 
who has checked it out and while that person is editing that file nobody else can you know uh, touch that file for that uh, for that time period yes once i have gone and made my changes and i have you know uh, uploaded it back again or have under undo the or have undo the checkout then yes then somebody else can check it out and start working with it so that's basically something which we have to keep in mind so now you can see once you check it out you get to see this tick mark you know next to the file name indicating that the file is currently in checked out mode and it is it has been granted uh, uh, exclusive access to only me at the moment because I am the person who has currently checked it out to myself so now that we have the file checked out to ourselves let's go and run through the properties we'll also go to the schedule and trigger and we'll try to understand you know uh, certain aspects about the same so first and foremost let's talk about the properties journal in the section you can see file name that was created status of the last turn it is failure you can see your log entries over here so every time you go and run this file a log entry will be created indicating uh, the name of the file when was the last time it ran status of the last run was it or was it not set for repetition were there any errors in the execution of the same all these things getting you know logged over here and here you have an option priority for queuing so if you have multiple scripts you know running at the same time then the queue gets created and if your task is you know like a high priority one then it obviously you know will jump the queue and it will be given first preference next thing you're seeing is timeout in minutes if you feel you know that uh, if, a, if a task goes beyond a particular threshold in terms of you know time spent in uh, the process of execution then probably you know you don't want to go beyond a certain you know time period then you can specify a timeout period so when you give a timeout period it means that if the task is taking longer than that to execute then you want to call it quits and you do not want to you know go ahead so in that case you can give a timeout period which indicates that uh, if the task is going to take longer than that to execute then it would be aborted so that is basically you know the timeout thing which we uh, need to keep ourselves on top of last but not the least is enable the stars to run with other similar files or window titles now sometimes it may happen you know that uh, i go and do a recording on a particular uh, you know file maybe abc.xlsx and then when i run it i expect it to do the same job as i did on abc.xlsx by replicating those actions on some other files let's say def.xlsx or ghi.xlsx now sometimes what happens is the software comes up with an error saying you know that look i could not find the original file and hence abc.xlsx and i cannot proceed hence so in that case you have to put a check mark in this box wherein we are telling the software that look if you didn't find the original abc.xlsx as long as there is any other file with the same extension let's say df or ghi or jkl or any other file for that reason you proceed on and do the same job on top of it as was supposed to be done on the original document and uh, try to get the same results replicated as we had on the original document so that is basically to help us get across these tight spots so, or for example let's say you did a, some word uh, some work in abc.txt and you want to do the have the same stuff done in df.txt or ghi.txt for that reason in that case also we can you know go and see the same stuff wherein the software will then proceed to you know replicate what it did on abc.txt it will replicate on df.txt or ghi.txt for that reason and we should be able to get the uh, results of our recording on abc.txt getting replicated on df or ghi or jkl or whatever it is so this is when you get these kind of errors that are unable to find the win original window abc or xyz or whatever on which the recording was done so it helps us you know get across those kind of you know uh, errors as such description slash notes uh, this is basically you know to help us understand more you can write a quick line explaining uh, why this task was made so that tomorrow just when you place your mouse on this particular task uh, you, by looking at the description slash notes 
you can you know get a fairly good idea as to what this recording was made for or what was its purpose or what it is doing so it's basically to help us recollect you know that why we made that recording for uh, originally so something on those lines next thing over here is repeat now repeat basically is you know uh, allows us to go and uh, uh, repeat a particular task a couple of times so right now if you go and execute a script it's going to go and run just once if you want it should go and run you know maybe 10 times whenever you call it let's say I say 5 so now whenever I go and call this script it will run 5 times over or maybe I want to keep running over and over and over again till I go and kill it so then I can choose repeat until I stop it so then uh, it will keep running until I go and hit the escape button or inside the runtime window I hit the X mark and till that, till that happens I'm going to go and keep running then you have a repeat for a certain time frame this is going to go and keep the script running for the next three and a half hours or whatever time duration I specify it's going to keep running till that time duration elapses repeatedly now usually when a script is marked for repetition it does not you know have any breaks or gaps in between but if you want it should take some breaks or gaps in between you can specify you know that we want some time between repeats for example I can specify maybe I want one minute between every two repetitions so now the software will take a break of one minute every two between every two repetitions so we can have that uh, last but not the least you have upon error continue with next repeat now suppose let's say we have we had sent you know the script to repeat for 10 times over when it hit repetition number 5 it hit a snag an error came in by default what happens is it is uh, if an error comes in a script it will you know crash down right over there itself the whole process comes down so if you want if an error happened on repetition number 5 it should go into repetition number 6 if an error happened on repetition number 6 it should go into repetition number 7 so in that case you can choose upon error continue with next repeat so that is something about the repeat property as such next is speed uh, by default the software is going to run the script at the same pace at which it was recorded but if you want it maybe you're on some kind of a time crunch and you want it to go faster so you can go inside speed setting and you can say high speed replay so when it's a high speed replay it's going to go and you know run a, it's going to try to run faster uh, if it still does not you know hit your expectations then you can try to run in turbo action mode which is the fastest mode possible in which this script can run the only catch is that mouse move command if any inside the script they will not get executed so if I go inside the turbo action mode and I go and edit it I'm just opening that you know screen recording one I'm just going and editing it and I can see over here there are a lot of you know lines inside it the last line is mouse move so when you're running a script in turbo action mode any line which uh, any you know, uh, mouse move command instance will not get executed so this you know uh, may lead to you know your script not working properly so uh, the best way to go around this would be to redesign your script rewrite your script or uh, replan your script in such a way that there are no mouse moves commands in it so some alternative strategy would have to be devised to you know uh, be able to run the script in turbo action mode by you know tweaking away your mouse pool with some ordered set of actions maybe rewriting you know the script to a larger extent or making some changes to facilitate these uh, you know uh, requests or these you know uh, limitations coming next to notification uh, notification is basically the ability for software to send mail to all the concerned stakeholders as soon as the task finishes execution so our software has the ability that as soon as the script finishes it can shoot out a mail to all the concerned stakeholders telling them that look the task finished finished successfully the task finished the finished with failures so for this to happen you have to go earlier inside tools options and email settings and you have to specify your outgoing mail server settings so you can see host smtp gmail you have to specify port number is something 
and uh, username and password so these are the credentials to our box through which we want the software to send a mail on our behalf to all the concerned stakeholders so you have to give all these details so ideally uh, I believe uh, we would you know be expecting that our official email server should be able to you know do that so you have to give permissions to our software to be able to go through your corporate firewall and start speaking to your mail server so those permissions have to be signed and uh, then you have email notification as you can see so this is going to be the template of the email that's going to go uh, when you know this condition becomes true so email settings here we are specifying that from which box the mail will be sent an email notification we are specifying that mail will be sent from that box to uh, which of our stakeholders so I can have multiple people separate by semicolons and all this 2cc bcc section you can change the subject line if you wish to you can alter all these things but uh, you cannot bring in your custom variables over here so in that case you might want to be careful before what you change because all these you know values within angular brackets they will get replaced by real time data when the mail does uh, come in so you might want to exercise caution over there so a good way of you know keeping uh, your stakeholders or uh, the key you know person responsible for uh, the safe execution of the task on top of things so let me go and show this to you so i'm going to just say send email notification when the task finishes and this obviously will come to life as soon as as our script finishes execution so i'm going to go and you know just go and run the script so run it and as soon as it finishes execution we will then proceed to go and check our mailbox that whether or not that mail came in so we are running it and we should be able to see our yes you can see it's going and writing inside that notepad uh, my first screen recording seems to have gone and done the job and once it's done that we can take it ahead so it's gone and already uh, stopped let me go and check my mailbox real quick over here so I'm going to go inside my mailbox and there we are and we are logging in let's go and give in our username let's go and give in our password and we are logging in just go and check this what was the email notification template automation you have finished executing the task so that mail should have gone uh, to which is be training I hope the password is right let me just go and check this one load ASP training oops what happened just a moment spam and trash so as you can see uh, uh, I was able to you know get that mail uh, issues seem to be with my password setting so once I was able to go and rectify my you know password so 
seem to be something wrong over there. Once I set my password right, I'm able to now get my mail. Today's date and timing, one moment ago, we were able to, you know, get that mail also. So that was us, you know, going and uh, getting that uh, confirmation mail from the software informing us that the task finished executing successfully. And that is where we were, you know, uh, trying to figure out what was the issue. So this was something about email notification. So whether the, you know, task finishes successfully or whether, you know, it encounters an error. In both cases, it's able to shoot a mail informing the concerned stakeholders about the issue at hand. If I can just take you to a previous stage where I, you know, deliberately raised an error and you can see I got, you know, the fail message. So whether it fails or whether it succeeds accordingly, you, you know, get a status of the information helping you understand that, uh, you know, how things are and where we are at the moment. So. That was something about notification that we were, you know, looking into. Next thing is hotkey. Today, everything, anything can be, you know, uh, achieved by the click of a button. We have got, you know, fast dials on our smartphones and whatnot. So similarly, you know, I think uh, expecting that going and getting a task to be executed based on some key combination is, I think, a very reasonable, you know, expectation. So for that, we can go and click on these ellipses over here and we can choose amongst the various key combinations available. Uh, the only uh, thing that we have to keep in mind is you can use only any of those key combinations which is, you know, uh, bold. The one which is grayed out cannot be used. So for example, I am going to use this control plus J combination and now if I go and say control J then my script should come to life. So I've just pressed that key combination and there we go. So I can just go and kill it. We all know what it does. And probably close this window also. And now proceeding to security. Now let's say that you know you had a script which was scheduled to run at some odd hours, you know, when we were maybe not in the physical vicinity of our machine, you know, maybe at the end of the day, you press a control alt and a del, you lock your system or log off your system and then you, you know, proceed for the days, you know, uh, once you've finished your day's work. Then in that case, what you can do is you can use the feature of auto login settings. So I've gone inside tools, options. And here under an auto login settings, we'll have to go over Windows username and password, the password to our, you know, Windows uh, system. And once we have given that and, you know, check mark these boxes over here, then what's going to happen is that at that predefined time, you know, when the task which is supposed to be running at the odd hours is scheduled to run, at that point of time, the system will automatically log in using these auto login credentials. And then it will, you know, execute the task at hand and then it will log off or lock back the system as was the previous state. So that is something about auto login settings. So uh, while it's a good feature, but it has to be taken with a pinch of salt, the reason being that there may be, you know, certain security concerns and we also have tried to address the same using these features which we are currently about to discuss. The first feature is advanced settings wherein what we want, what we can do is, you know, you can choose to run the task at hand in stealth mode. So what happens is, you know, that in case, let's say in the middle of the night, you know, automatically the software has logged in and it is running the script which was scheduled to run at odd hours, then, uh, you know, anybody run, uh, uh, in the vicinity of your machine even if he chances to, you know, peek into what's happening, will not be able to see the surface on which the recording is happening. So let's say it was some Excel sheet with some critical, you know, financial information. So he will not be able to see that Excel sheet in the background. So that way, you know, your data, your work is safeguarded. The next line of defense is, you know, disabling the mouse and keyboard as long as the task is running under auto login settings. So in this setting, what we are doing is, let's say, you know, you had disabled uh, only the first uh, action as in run the task in stealth mode was the only action we had done. 
In that case, somebody can just do a control or Dell take over your system. You're technically logged in, and he can, you know, he or she can cause the required damage that you know they want to cause to us or to our organization. In that case, we can choose to disable mouse and keyboard, so that even if anybody wants, they cannot get a control of the system. With the mouse and keyboard physically logged out, they cannot access the system as long as it is running under auto login setting. So then that you know brings us to the within the safety net uh, the only key thing to keep in mind is that as long as this task is running under auto login settings with the mouse and keyboard disabled we will also not be able to interact with the system so if you have any interactive tasks which you know throw a menu option ask you to choose some option then give some result which you again supposed to respond to those kind of interactive tasks are a strict no no with this feature enable so that's something about auto login settings, which I would like to, you know, uh, bring to attention. Useful feature, but should be used with a caution. Next thing is scheduling. Uh, we can schedule a task as per our requirement. So I can say, for example, one time only. It's almost two thirteen. So let's make it fourteen. Today's date, and we will go and save it. So it's asked me for the username and password. So same has to be provided in because the system would like to know you know whether we are the genuine user of the system or not so that is why it asks me to you know supply my windows credentials and once i've done that it will go ahead and schedule the task because it should not happen you know that for a moment you are away and somebody you know schedules the task at some odd hours and he or she is able to you know then uh, cause some damage so uh, again, as you can see, a uh, feature where uh, whenever you're trying to schedule a task also, you have to key in your password unless you have already specified it. So coming from that perspective, so that is something about scheduling, which we are just looking at, I think, a few seconds away from execution status. Just give it a moment. And it's begin to should be running any moment now because it has already hit the time in the clock and we should be seeing the runtime window. There it is. Loading task and it, I believe the runtime window itself has made itself a scarce. And there you are. So I can just go and disable it. So that's gone to the aborting mode. So that was, you know, how you can have a script schedule. You can schedule at any time interval as per your frequency. I hope that runtime window is now, yes, it's gone now. Next thing is triggers. You know, sometime it may happen, you know, that we may uh, not be interested in executing a script at some particular, uh, you know, uh, time or interval but rather we would like that script to be executed based on certain events which we refer to as trigger events so as and when that event happens it should trigger off the execution of my script for example execution of this script based on a window so I can choose any window for example this my documents window which I have open in front of me I'm going to say uh, my documents window and I say as long as soon as this window closes, maybe I want this task to be fired. So let's say the whole day I'm working on some application. At the end of the day, when I close that application, as the window closes, which could be again web-based or window-based, it should lead to some winding up activities. For example, it should shoot off some mails. It should move some files from location A to location B, and maybe also shut down the system automatically. So all those things we want should automatically happen as soon as I, you know, close my master window where I'm supposed to be working during the day just to give you a you know small idea as to what could be the larger scope of this uh, command so I'm going to go and save it and now if I go and close this particular window over here let's see what happens so this should go and you know trigger off that task at hand and as you can see I am already in seeing the loading task window and we are going to go and kill it and that should you know 
deal with that so that is something our window you know uh, by which we can close by which we can execute any action execute excuse me then maybe a file this time so let's say you know there's a process which goes and modifies a file and as soon as the process executes maybe you want you know some other action to be initiated so maybe the process finishes and then you want something else to be started and what we know is that as soon as the process finishes it goes and modifies some file and that can be used as a triggering mechanism to fire off some other actions so what I can do is I can go and create a file over here for this demonstration so I'm going to go inside this folder and in this folder I'm going to go and create a document something known as a test delete document so idea is as soon as I delete this file it should go and you know fire off my task at hand so I say file name and you go and point to that location at hand and this is my folder this is my you know, text file excuse me and as soon as this is deleted we want our script to be launched so I'm going to go and save this one also that as soon as this file is deleted we want our script to be fired so I am going to deliberately go and delete this script uh, this text file excuse me because as per our action when the file is deleted it should lead to the execution of the script at hand and there you can see the script in perspective has started firing so that's something about a file getting deleted launching our script folder you can you know also put a tab on your folders for that reason so I have this folder maybe so what I want maybe is that uh, let's go and point to this folder so pointing to this folder this time maybe I'll give it this way and I'll say uh, when any file is created in this folder even in the subfolders within it then you know we want this script to be fired so I'm going inside that folder and let me go and create a file inside it and let's see what happens so you can see any change in that folder led to the uh, as in the creation of a file within that folder which was when a file is created in that folder it should launch the script and that is precisely what it did so we have that level of you know uh, capture also as you can see performance uh, let's say a task is very CPU intensive and what we want is any any time you know maybe when only when there's enough bandwidth on your CPU should it go and execute a particular task so I can say when CPU usage is below 20% 25% then only my task should get fired so I can specify that so now the software will keep monitoring so as and when the CPU usage falls below this threshold it will go and execute the script at hand so that is something about performance then you have processes so you have many of processes which is running for example I have my uh, let's say my uh, Firefox for this reason so as I'm going to go and detect this Firefox or DXE so process I'm going to say is it able to detect the Firefox or DXE I'm going to say when this process stops so when Firefox closes then it should launch this script so I'm going to just go and close this Firefox now so I've closed that so but when the process will stop then the script should be fired so I've closed the window but now the process stopped and now you can see the script again has taken off so I can just go and kill it so that was based on a process you know getting fired and then you have service so we have so many services in our system many services very critical crucial to the running of our software also which you would like to keep a tab on for example the scheduler service so whenever the service stops if the service stops you know then your scheduled tasks will not run so what you want is as soon as the service runs, maybe it should shoot a mail to all the concerned stakeholders telling them that look the service has stopped take the required action so you can create a task wherein you send a mail uh, for, for now I will execute this script as soon as the service stops so I can say automation anywhere enterprise scheduler service 
when the service stops. So anytime the automation event enterprise scheduler service stops, this star should be fired. So now I'm going to go and stop this automation event enterprise scheduler service deliberately. Now when you're playing with service, you need to be very careful. You know, you touch a service which is very important and everything will go down. So now you can see I stopped the service deliberately and the you know uh, script shot up. So I'm going to start this one that goes and launches this one. So once I have the purpose of a particular trigger is done, I am removing it as you can see. Last but not the least is this email message trigger. Now this is a very f uh, useful feature because this gives me or this gives us the remote ability to fire off a task from any location. So let's say we made a task which is lying on our system and the concerned people who are you know using that task day in day out would like to be able to remotely execute it. So what you can do is you can create a trigger as I would be in a moment's time and then all you have to do is ascertain that your machine is up running connected to the internet and then any person sitting from any location around the globe, once he shoots a mail into that relevant box, which we have earmarked for that email message trigger to monitor, it will fire off the relevant script. So that is what we are looking at. So let's go and you know point to this box and then see if you are able to get the required action out of it. IMAP gmail.com port number is 993 check for mail every one minute username I need to give it right password and save it so as soon as the mail arrives in this box, you should go off and shoot off that particular uh, task at hand. So that's what we want. So since you will not be, oops, did we receive a mail or I'm just checking. Nope. So we just shoot a mail to ourselves just to be on the safe side because obviously, you know, we not like to keep waiting. Trigger email demo and we send it and that should bring in the mail inside this box and that should lead to the required action happening so just waiting for that mail to be detected by the software so the mail has come in and we'll give the software a quick moment to be able to detect it and once it is able to detect the mail coming in the box it should we should see some action happening so we'll just give it one quick moment and while we are waiting for it, I would also like to mention that you can have your triggers and schedules from here also. You can click on trigger, you can add trigger from here also. And you can see, by the way, the script has started executing. I'm going to go and kill it. So the mail was successfully detected and we saw the action also happening. So like I was, so now when this is done, I can go and delete it. So like I was saying, you can go inside manage triggers and you can add triggers from here also. So add, so you can see you can create triggers on tasks, workflows, report files, on all of these objects. And you can also go inside triggers and in triggers you can go and you know create trigger on task workflow reports. I guess I went in that only earlier. And in schedules also you can set up schedules also from here. So manage schedules. So you can set up schedules on also objects like tasks, workflows, report files, VB scripts, Java scripts. So all possible for us to schedule. So you can so if you have a particular task open at the top and then you go into schedule and trigger, it basically is going to do it for that task. But if you go inside manage schedule trigger, then you can pick up any object from any location and schedule on it. So more flexibility but the work is more or less the same it's actually the same but uh, different ways of doing it this allows you to pick up any random task or workflow or schedule for that reason uh, this one is 
the one at the bottom that we saw earlier that we were using gives the same functionality but it's going to whatever task you selected at the top is going to basically allow you to schedule and trigger that one only otherwise the way the mechanism the output the delivery is the same so that was something about triggers schedule and properties that we saw so i do hope everybody is good and comfortable till this point we are clear with these aspects also and until we meet again uh thank you